yeah, so Goran is there with the Templar Zero Challenge. So, Goran, we play. So I'm going to go d4 here. And now I'll play bishop f4 in London system style. He goes for g6, and I like this idea of knight to c3. My threat is e4. If he just goes bishop g7, I'll build up a big center. The other option is that he can go d5. So he goes bishop g7, he allows me to build up this center, which I'm usually happy about. Um, this is this is a little, I think, a nice advantage. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong, this is theory, it's been played at master level like this uh, many hundreds if not thousands of times, but in general I think that m me personally, in this position against knight c3, I prefer to go d5 and take a piece of the pie here in the center and avoid letting your opponent build up this center. So he goes d5 now, uh, which is kind of rare, I think usually they go d6 here, um, but he goes d5 instead. I have to admit, I don't know so much what to do uh, here, or what the theory is. Um, one option would be to take, 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 and then take this guy. But the guy on d4 would be falling. Guy, I don't know why I'm calling my pawns guys, but... Uh, okay, instead we play pawn to e5. We'll hit the knight on f6. And the question is, what is he going to do with that knight? If he goes back to d7, I think I can just take this pawn. Uh, if he goes to h5, I'll just probably drop the bishop back. And I'll hope that the knight on h5 is just severely misplaced. If he goes to g8, then I'm I'm very happy because you know the knight just came out and then back to its starting square. And if he goes to e4, that's probably the the most reasonable square. Um, but there I feel like I can maybe take take and put my bishop on c4. Definitely an option. And another thing that I could maybe do against knight. Um, against knight e4 is I could maybe drop my knight back, uh, move my knight back, and the idea there is that I want to play f3 and trap the knight. Um, so it's a little bit of a sneaky one. And now he has gone to e4, so now the question is, do I do I believe what I say, you know, after knight here? Do I believe that I can trap the piece? My biggest concern, at first at least, is f6 here. The point being that after f3, he takes, and if I take here, he finally has a square uh, in the, the c5 square. So that's uh, that's a little bit annoying. Um, but after knight here, f6, I can't take because that, that would give him a square. At least I can't take if I hope to trap the piece. Um, so I'm not seeing a good way to trap the piece. Or any way, rather, to trap the piece. Um... Nope. <laughs> no way to trap the piece that I can see. So, if that's the case, then I guess I'll just play a normal move here. I'll capture, and then I'll develop my bishop to this uh, diagonal that has just become available. And in general, in theory, I should be doing quite well here because we each have one pawn that is in the other side's half, but my pawn is better protected uh, than his. And then I have two developed pieces. His bishop on g7 will take a bit until it's, you know, until it's active, but it's very difficult to play the move f6 here, especially with my bishop on c4. Um, it becomes very dangerous. Uh, he's gone for c5, trying to break down my center, which I definitely agree that's the, the the approach you should take. But it's quite dangerous here because it does allow me to play, to push the pawn on with d5 here. Um, so I'm going to go for it. It's a bit enterprising, it's a little bit risky, uh, but at the same time it's so tempting to be able to uh, drive two connected pawns here um, into his half of the board. And hopefully with all of the minor pieces on the board, Hopefully, it's going to be difficult for him to, um, to to develop properly. So, for example, he could go knight d7, but then I could maybe continue to push the pawn with e6. And after pawn takes, pawn takes, uh, let's say if he moved his knight, then I would have a move like bishop b5 check. And in that position, I'm actually already winning material because 
the king, if the king moves, the queen would drop. Um, so that's that's one example. Of course, it's very risky though, and maybe I should actually have done something more sensible, like c3, uh, just defend the the center. Actually, if I could turn back time, I probably would play c3 because I'm a little bit uh, worried that in this position here, if I'm not careful, this guy might drop because you know after knight d7. If I didn't have this move e6, then on the next move he's going to take the pawn. And even if I do play e6, at some point down the line this guy might fall. Um, additionally, he might do something like b5 at the right moment. Right now he doesn't have it because I could take with check. But if he's castled, if in, in, if in this position here he was castled, he could play b5 because bishop takes would run into, into queen a5, uh, queen a5 check, uh, picking up the bishop. And b5, the idea would be that if I have to move the bishop back, then he can start to go bishop b7. I can't draw arrows. <laughs> Sorry, guys. And and put pressure on my center. So basically, in a nutshell, I'm concerned that I, I maybe was overextended uh, with the moves that I played. However, the way that he he combats it uh, with this move, I don't, I don't like it so much, the way he's playing here. I think um, now I can shift gears, I can take... I can take on e6, and the point is that after a series of exchanges, he's going to be left with a bad structure, because uh, what I expect is the queens will come off the board, he'll probably play bishop takes, he can play f takes, but it won't change uh, It won't change the evaluation. Uh, I think f takes would be worse, because my bishop is more active than his, so bishop takes e6 makes a lot of sense. Uh, now I will take, this was my, my plan, and now I will develop. And the point is that his structure here is a bit, A, it's a bit loose, with this pawn here potentially vulnerable, and B, uh, but this, for some reason, <laughs> I, I didn't realize, I think I should be okay, but I didn't realize just how quickly my pawn on e5 would fall. Today I'm, I'm not on my A game, to be honest. Uh, guys, I haven't been playing, I feel like I've mi been missing quite a lot of different ideas. And even this move is is a is potentially a clever idea. I'm going bishop takes. Basically, what he wants to avoid is let's say an exchange here, 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 and takes. And then in that situation, not only are my pieces more actively placed than his, because my knight on e4 is creating a threat of capturing on c5, also a threat of d6 check with further uh, attacks. So my pieces would be better placed in this variation with takes, 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 and takes. My pieces would be better placed. He would have concrete threats to deal with and his structure would be worse with this pawn on e6 um, being weak. And I think he wanted to avoid that. That's why he played the move uh, e3. And the so the idea with e3 is that um, after bishop takes e3, the, the um, sorry, his idea would be that if I could play f takes e3 in order to keep the bishop here defending the pawn on e5, then after he exchanges everything, then I'm the one that has you know an e pawn uh, that is that is isolated as well as him. So then we have complete equality. So I think the movie three is about trying to achieve equality. But maybe what Black missed here is that after Bishop takes e three, yes, this pawn on e five is about to drop, but it was going to drop anyway. But the c five pawn is under attack. So he's gone. He's he's adjusted to this with the move knight d four, which I think is a very interesting move. Um, the point, I think, is that now he says, well, there's an attack on c2. I'm still threatening to take on e5. If you defend the pawn, I will take this guy. Um, and if you take here, take here, I'm hitting your knight. You probably have to capture me. Then I'll take on e5. And when you move your rook, then the situation is not so bad for me. And I mean, my bishop, I have a bishop against the knight. A bishop with pawns everywhere on the board is probably a better piece than your knight, a little bit better, a little more effective. So that position is quite good uh, for me. And I think I agree with him, actually. I think that that position, I would like to get more out of the position than that. So now what I'm, I'm thinking is, how can I try and get more? And the move that I'm looking at is f4, defending the pawn and locking his bishop out of the game. Now he can take this pawn, and then I would probably have to play a move like king e2, and he can take my bishop. That's probably what's going to be best for him to do, because otherwise his knight on c2, first of all, it might get trapped 
um, in, in my territory. And secondly, this bishop is quite a nice piece. So he still, in this case, he would still get a uh, bishop versus a knight. But in this particular structure, the my knight is a very effective piece because here in that structure, my knight would have squares like d6 and f6, outposts generated by the pawn on e5, as well as an attack on c5 and an outpost on g5 by the pawn on f4 from which it can attack uh, the e6 pawn. So I think that's a lot better than a situation like this, where once my central pawn falls, I have no outpost. Um, so that's why I'm going to go for f4 here. And I figure I have to give a pawn. I have to give up either this guy or this guy. I wish I had two moves. I could do this and then defend this guy. Uh, and then I'd be very happy, but I don't. So I have to give one up. And that's the one I'm going to give up. Now I go king e2 and give him the option whether he wants to take or not. But maybe I should go king d2. Since if he then moves the knight, I can take this guy. So king on d2 would immediately target the knight. The only thing about this move is it does give the new option of knight d4. Because my rook is no longer at attacking. Uh, after knight d4, bishop takes, pawn takes. However, then I can go knight b5 and I'm hitting this pawn. And I feel like the pawn is probably going to drop. So I think playing knight d4 is kind of a red herring. So I'm going to go king d2. I'm expecting that he's going to take on e3, I, but I'm sort of forcing the forcing the matter, at least, at least unless I've missed something, I feel like I'm forcing the matter. <clears throat> so he does do what I think was the, the best move, but I, I think I have a little bit of an edge here. Uh, material is equal, and as I said, at one point, the bishop is often a, a, a better piece against the knight, but the margins are pretty thin. And in this case, I think that the knight is the better piece because of the structure. The better structure makes it uh, easier for me to um, <clears throat> easier for me to uh, you know use the full potential of my knight. Whereas for him, the structure actually with the pawns on dark squares acts as a shield. Um, for him to for him to use his bishop, probably his best bet is to go a little bit passive against my knight. So the bishop here is actually not doing anything, and I played g three in order to support this structure. So he can take one of two approaches: either he can try and crack this uh, nut, so to speak, here by playing, let's say, takes takes, putting a rook here or or something, a bishop here, and trying really desperately to break down. Um, the structure on f4. My impression is he's not going to succeed because I should be able to defend uh, well enough and maybe put a knight here and even, even from there maybe blockade with the knight. And the other approach that he could take is I feel he could have done this if he wanted but he could probably put his bishop on e7 and go passive but the idea is my knight is probably going to be on e4 and from there the bishop on e7 would guard my uh, key entry squares. He hasn't done that though, and he spent a tempo on this move a6, which makes some sense actually, because he was worried about this entry point, but I don't think that that's as big of a deal. For example, if he had gone, let's say, takes, takes, bishop here, knight here, then I think he could go king f7. No, king f7 is not possible. Actually, you know what? Maybe he's right. Maybe I hadn't seen this idea of putting the knight uh, on b5, because then the threat is knight c7, and if you go rook c8, I can maybe take this pawn, and then, okay, you can go back, back, and take this guy. A lot of calculation there. Um, but I feel after knight e4 takes, takes, the problem that he's now facing is that this check is available, and because he spent his tempo here, rather than putting his bishop here, the, the two-tempo operation, now if he tries in this position to go bishop f8, I now have knight f6 before he can land on e7. And after knight f6, it's really too dangerous. For example, if king e7, rook d7 uh, would already be checkmate. So you can see just how dangerous it is. He goes for b6 in order to not lose a pawn, uh, which makes a lot of sense to me. One idea that I have is just rook here, because I know that if bishop here, knight check is really, um, is very, very dangerous for him. And the other idea, of course, is to just give this check. But maybe it's not such a big deal after the king goes on e7. So I'm going to go rook here, because I, what I really want is this square on f6. 
I want to put the knight here because that way I don't block my rook. And if he goes rook g8 here, I can actually go check anyway because bishop takes will be met by rook takes. So he's gone for um, bishop h6. And now he really, he better avoid king e7, I guess. I don't know. It doesn't matter actually whether he goes king e7 or f7. I will have this check. So I guess maybe king f8 is best and I'll probably go rook d7 anyway. But at least in that case, it comes without a check. Nevertheless, I think the position is lost because at this point, um, the pieces are just too strong here for uh, for white. So I will go rook d7. I could go knight d7, check, and knight takes b6. And this was probably just a win as well because I could then, you know, if he goes rook here, I could go knight c4 and defend my b2 pawn. Um, so it would be a technical win. But I feel like at this stage of the game, I feel like white has a much uh, bigger advantage than that and so can, can afford to ignore uh, ignore pawns. So one, one idea here that I have is there is a, a well-known mating net, which is if this pawn wasn't here, I'd push the pawn on e6 and I'd go rook f7 and that would be checkmate. I'd love to do that, which is what makes me feel maybe I should play a move like king e4. Now, a lot of players, what they'll say is, well, you can't play king e4 because, you know, you don't, I mean, they assume that they won't have time for a move like king e4. Uh, but actually, you know, the question is, what can he actually do with his time? Right now, he's pushing queenside pawns, which isn't a concern. That's basically um, irrelevant to our plan because it will take one, two, three, four moves at least before he can um, create problems. So we can actually do a count, f5 takes, takes b4, e6, and then c3, and, and we're already uh, getting there. So he doesn't have any threats. The rook can't move. The bishop is, is stuck because this square is covered. This rook cannot challenge our rook. The king cannot move. So the, the position is one where he's completely dominated. And so the idea with king e4 and f5 is just to get out of this pin. I could have also gone, say, to f3. Uh, get out of this pin and then... After f5, okay, he takes with check, so I have to play king takes. And then what I want to do is I want to put the pawn on e6, and then rook f7 will be a threat of checkmate. So, yeah, I think my opponent doesn't have anything. Ah, so rook e8, he has this move, but funnily enough, uh, I was I was thinking this is one way that he can prevent this, but it falls, it fails to a very nice, um, very nice uh, mating idea here with the move rook g8. And the point is now that's forcing rook takes g8. And then after rook takes g8, I'll take on h7. Uh, and that'll be a, a kind of a smothered checkmate, but a, a strange kind of uh, smothered uh, checkmate. So it's kind of a nice, a nice end to uh, to the game. So thank you to Goran Zaric, uh, who who played a a, a good game. Um, yeah, it was no, it was, it was a very interesting game. But I think here, probably at this point, yeah, the advantage is minimal, and Black has you know some approaches like something like Castle here. I can defend, and now maybe this. E3 idea is, is interesting. And it's true that black is, you know, black is definitely on, you know, has to be a bit more careful um, because he has some material on, on the line there. Uh, this structure is not very good, but probably what I did, I don't know, maybe in this position, I needed to do something else. I needed to go, yeah, it seems like D takes C5, surprisingly, is considered best. I, I really didn't like it after Queen A5, Queen here, and Queen takes C5. But yeah, engine is engine is is on the fence here. I don't know what I'm supposed to do against knight e4. Turns out that maybe this way of playing is actually perfectly good, and I just was not familiar with it. Um, because what I'm seeing here that's somewhat surprising is that this has even been played by Vashiel Legrav. So if it's been played by MVL, it tells me I actually just don't. Uh, um, I can't expect. That I can, you know, punish this. Yeah, I, 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 there was me thinking I had this false sense of confidence, like, oh, this must not be very good because I haven't seen it. But actually, it just turns out I need to study more theory. Um, 
I was thinking about this and you can see that plus two, so huge winning advantages against everything except this annoying move f6. And after f3, then you just take here. And then, as I said, the knight escapes to c5. It suddenly gains the square. So that that is not cool. So I took here, takes here, and I put the bishop on c4. And maybe this was a mistake. Maybe queen d2 was a smarter choice. Now with c5, um, for example, one strong grandmaster, he went like this. Although even that game does not seem so convincing after the move bishop to d7. Seems like bishop takes d7, queen takes d7, d5. He went like this. Um, his opponent played e6, much like in our game, but what if his opponent had gone queen f5 and gone straight for the throat here on e5? Um, I'm not sure, I'm not so convinced that black, that white has uh, so much there. Um, so after d takes e4, bishop c4, c5, and yeah, maybe I should have played c3 or knight e2. What I said, d5, you can see actually the engine really doesn't like this. It says it's over ambitious. And after knight d7, e6, it says, I'll just go here. Do not take the bait like with this trap that I was talking about. This is wishful thinking because now the queen is stuck. And, you know, if you move your king, then goodbye queen. And so you have to lose at least one piece. Uh, so that's wishful thinking. But instead he says, okay, let's not keep those lines uh, open. And now if you check, now king f8, without this line open, what you're doing is not so special and a lot of less experienced players they see these pawns and they think man this is the dream i'm crushing my opponent my opponent's gonna resign i'm gonna later on show my friends you know what a I'm tactical genius i am and etc etc more experienced players that have been bitten several times should know not me in this case i i, I didn't know but they should know that when you put your pawns this far like this sometimes the center, sometimes you steamroll your opponent, but sometimes it's not quite what it appears at first sight and the center collapses and, and uh, your pawns get, get chewed up, right? So here I would have been in some trouble after knight d7. Fortunately for me, my opponent played e6 and this gave me the opportunity to go for this. And after this, he was always on the back foot because his structure was worse. And uh, it's not a major uh, advantage but you have to be very precise here as black. And so he played the move knight c6, knight c3. And maybe here he needs something like castle. But he went e3 and this move already made the situation bad. Missing that if you do take this guy, then after bishop takes c5, white is up a pawn and has the better pawn structure. And you can't really rely on something like this and say, well, I'm down a pawn. But on the other hand, the structure is bad for me. The reason that the, the structure is better. The reason why white black can't equalize in this way is first of all, he started off with a worse structure than his opponent. So now we can only speak of both sides having a bad structure. And even though I think this is a little bit worse than this, because this is two sets of isolated pawns and one set of double pawns, whereas this is just one isolated pawn. So I think fair enough to say that the white structure is worse than the black. The problem there is twofold. One, White has still an extra pawn. And two, white has the bishop now against the knight, which on this board is likely to be stronger. So overall, it's actually still at least a one point edge for white. So this is not, uh, this is not a way to bail out. After bishop takes, black tried knight d4 instead. And what I was saying is if you go for this position here, still certainly a significant advantage but I, I was less convinced, like for example, takes, takes, and king e7. Now I'm up a pawn, only white can press the position, and certainly I wouldn't want to be facing a strong grandmaster and playing black here. Um, but I think uh, stronger is the move f4, and this forces this line, and as you can see, the engine agrees that knight takes e3 is best. And here, yeah, the, the from an engine perspective, white is up a pawn, but better structure and this knight is an absolute monster and after this um g5 trying to undermine but you just don't you just can't quite break this down it's too too uh solid of a structure and a6 was a costly um costly tempo you can see that the evaluation jumps up there it turns out it was more important to fix attempt to fix other problems and maybe even connect the rooks or something like this it was a better try what I was suggesting, taking, taking a bishop here, I think is actually quite terrible also. 
because after this, the problem is rook h g1, and white is breaking in on the g file. And if you try to control that, he breaks in on the d file. So I think that my suggestions were not so impressive. Um, yeah, not so impressive. But here, at least what was what was quite nice is I think quite instructive this position here. And you can see that actually the, the engine yeah, is suggesting king e4 um, just with this particular with this particular mating net. And at this point, black couldn't do anything if you you know if you play e takes f5, king takes. This pawn will push forward and rook here. And um and the second that you go here, it was it was a nice nice combination with uh, with rook g8 and and just a smothered mate